Assumptions are dangerous, especially when they are made in the realm of religion. If a theological belief is based upon a faulty assumption, the religious practice will be in error. The most common assumptions in Christendom are that Saturday is the scriptural Sabbath and Sunday is the day on which Yehoshua was resurrected. These beliefs are built upon another assumption, that the modern week has cycled continuously and without interruption ever since creation. The facts of the Julian calendar, however, prove these assumptions false. The Julian calendar was established in 45 BC. Like the calendar of the Roman Republic before it, the early Julian calendar had an eight-day week. Days of the week on the Republican and early Julian calendars were assigned letters, A through H. All early Julian calendars, Fasti, still in existence, date from 63 BC to AD 37. An eight-day week is clearly discernible on these stone fragments. It is not to be doubted that the diffusion of the Iranian Persian mysteries has had a considerable part in the general adoption by the pagans of the week with Sunday as a holy day. The names which we employ unawares for the other six days came into use at the same time that Mithraism gained its followers in the provinces in the West. And one is not rash in establishing a relation of coincidence between its triumph and that concomitant phenomenon. As the Roman Empire expanded, it came into contact with Mithraism, which quickly became a popular religious cult in Rome. Mithraism brought a seven-day week with days named after planetary gods. Sunday cannot be the day on which Yahushua arose from the dead, because Sunday did not exist in the eight-day Julian week of his day. Furthermore, Saturday cannot be the true scriptural Sabbath because the seven-day planetary week originally began on Saturn's day. The Baths of Titus in Rome were built A.D. 79 to 81. A stick calendar was found there which clearly shows Saturn, god of agriculture, as god of the first day of the week. Dies Solis, or Sun's Day, can be seen as the second day of the week. Luna, the moon goddess wearing the crescent moon as a diadem, is the third day of the week. The week ends on Venus Day, Dies Veneris, which corresponds to modern Friday, was the seventh day of the week. The pagan planetary week, like the Julian calendar that adopted it, is irreparably pagan. Historical facts reveal that neither the scriptural Sabbath nor the scriptural first day can be found using the modern calendar. If it is important to worship on a specific day, then it is also important to use the correct scriptural calendar to count to that day. The lunisolar calendar of creation, using both sun and moon, is the only means to establish the true seventh-day Sabbath and the correct day of Christ's resurrection. He appointed the moon for seasons. Seasons? Moedim, the worshipping assemblies of Yahuwah's people. There were two calendars available to the Israelites of Yahushua's day. One, the solar Julian calendar with its eight-day week. Two, the lunisolar Hebrew calendar with a seven-day week and a weekly cycle that restarted with each new moon. Which calendar do you think the Israelites and Yahushua used? The day on which you worship, dictated by which calendar you use, reveals...
Yahuwah knows the needs of all his creatures. In his love, he has provided specifically for each one. Yahuwah knew that man should not work continuously without interruption. Knowing our weakness and our need to rest, as well as our need to obey, he segmented or divided time. The shortest segment of time is the day, divided by daylight and darkness. The next segment of time is the lunation of the moon. After that comes the four seasons, the summer and winter solstices, and spring and fall equinoxes that divide a solar year. These segments of time are out of the hands of man, being under the direct control of the Creator and governed by the movements of the heavenly bodies. Then Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And it was so. Each lunation was to be segmented by four Sabbaths, six work days with worship on the seventh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Eloah. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Yahuwah loves liberty and desires freedom for all his children. He commanded that the lunation, or month, be segmented by four Sabbaths. But that segmentation was put into the hands of man so that man could show his allegiance to the Elohim of heaven by obedience to the fourth commandment. While the Sabbath roughly follows the phases of the moon, it is not as clear and distinct a division of time as that of the day or the month. Yahuwah chose to leave this less defined, giving to man the opportunity to obey or disobey, depending upon what is in his heart to do. Those who love their Maker and seek to honor Him worship on the seventh day of the week. Their lunation is broken into four seven-day weeks with a translation day in 30-day months. Those who wish to rebel against the clear divine command are given the freedom to do so. A 30-day lunation can be divided into three 10-day weeks, as done in the calendar of the French Republic from 1793 to 1806, when the French government sought to de-Christianize France by getting away from a seven-day week. Worship on the seventh day of a seven-day week within the loony solar calendar is a sign of allegiance to the Creator. It acknowledges Him as the life and lawgiver to whom obedience, love, and devotion are owed. The spiritual purpose for segmenting time is to allow man time for self-evaluation. Every seventh-day Sabbath brings one face to face with the purity and holiness of Yahuwah. This throws into sharp contrast one's own failings and deformities. In the face of divine holiness, the repentant sinner exclaims, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, Yahuwah of hosts.
an additional worship day was given each lunation so that a person could examine where he had failed in the past lunation and to make resolutions for the upcoming lunation. This worship day is New Moon Day on the first of every month and comes before the work week which starts on the second of the month. New Moon Day is a time to meditate and consider one's spiritual status. How did it go in the past lunation? What do I want to do differently to bring my will and my life more in line with the will of my Creator? It is a time to seek forgiveness for past failings and help for the coming month. A prayer journal can be very useful when updated every new moon. People make New Year's resolutions, but they seldom keep them more than one or two months. Yahuwah understood this human failing and gave us the opportunity to refine and build on resolutions every new month. The modern Gregorian calendar, like the Julian calendar before it, has months that are completely divorced from the cycles of the moon. Thus, new moon days do not exist in this alternate method of timekeeping. However, this does not excuse anyone from returning worship to Yahuwah on new moon days. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul. New moons are in a class of worship day all by themselves. They were times of thanksgiving and rejoicing in heaven's bounty. Anciently, there were days of feasting as well. The prohibitions against cooking on Sabbaths did not apply to new moons, and devout Israelites who fasted on other days never fasted on a new moon. Work for Yahuwah can be performed on new moons. After the tabernacle had been constructed in the wilderness, Moses assembled all of the disparate parts on a new moon. And it came to pass, in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle, and fastened his sockets, and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof, and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as Yahuwah commanded Moses. However, no income-generating commerce may be done, the defiant heart never appreciates the opportunities heaven has provided for time spent with the Creator. Centuries later, rebellious Israel bemoaned the lost business opportunities when Sabbaths and new moons came. When will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat? making the ephah small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, even sell the bad wheat. Such an attitude is high treason against the government of heaven. New moons, like Seventh-day Sabbaths, are times of holy convocation, and the rejection of these holy days was directly responsible for Israel's overthrow by Assyria. The very next verses state, 
Yahuwah has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall the land not tremble for this and everyone mourn who dwells in it? While Yahuwah graciously winks at times of ignorance, knowing disobedience is treated as the rebellion that it is, Israel's worship degenerated into a form that had no spiritual value whatsoever. Yahuwah rejected Israel's worship, stating, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. While Israel went through the motions of worshipping Yahuwah, they were in fact honoring Saturn, as had their forefathers in the wilderness at the Golden Calf. Yahuwah demanded, did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? You also carried Sukkoth, your king, and Kayun, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says Yahuwah, whose name is Yahuwah of hosts. Kayun, another name for the god Saturn. Ancient Israel, like modern spiritual Israel, rejected Yahuwah's new moons and returned worship on Saturn's day, or Saturday. Prayer to the planets on their respective days was a part of the worship of the heavenly bodies. Such worship is not acceptable to Yahuwah. In Amos, Right after denouncing them for worship of Saturn, Yahuwah declares, Woe to them that set at naught Zion, and that trust in the mountain of Samaria, ye who are approaching the evil day, who are drawing near and adopting false Sabbaths. Therefore now shall they depart into captivity. For Yahuwah has sworn by himself, saying, because I abhor all the pride of Jacob, I will cut off his city with all who inhabit it. The same fate awaits all who cling to worship on Saturday of the modern counterfeit calendar, ignoring the obligation of observing the Sabbaths and new moons of the biblical loony solar calendar. Worship on all the Sabbaths or rests of Yahuwah is the distinguishing mark that sets His people apart. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahuwah that sanctify them. Indeed, Returning worship to the Creator on Sabbaths and new moons will be one of the joys of the redeemed in the new earth throughout all eternity. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith Yahuwah, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahuwah. Commit now to worshipping Yahuwah on all his holy rests, Sabbaths, new moons, and annual feasts. Untold joys await those who seek fellowship with him, in whom all the fullness of life dwells.
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. For people wanting to obey the Bible commandments, the question is, which is day one? All can count to seven, but where does the count begin? How can you know which is the true seventh day? The Creator who made the week also designed a month in which to place that week. The calendar of creation begins with New Moon Day, followed by four complete weeks. Each week contains six work days and a seventh day Sabbath rest. In the beginning, the Creator designed the movement of the sun and the moon to measure time. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, religious gatherings, and for days and years. Two great lights were set in the firmament of the heaven to rule over the day and over the night. Time can be measured only by movement. The movement of the sun measures a day. In 365 and a quarter days, the sun and the earth return to the same relative position. This is one solar year. The moon's 29 and a half day rotation measures a lunation, which is the basis of the month. Twelve and a third lunations are the same length as a solar year. There are three basic calendar formats using the movements of the sun and the moon. One solar, two lunar, three lunisolar. Number one, solar the measurement of the movement of Earth and Sun. Solar calendars use the Sun for measuring the length of the year only. Months of arbitrary length have no link to nature. On the Gregorian solar calendar, weeks cycle continuously. Even leap day every four years does not disrupt the continuous weekly cycle. Lunar the measurement of the moon's rotation. Lunar calendars are based strictly on the cycles of the moon. Months which begin the first dawn after conjunction cycle continuously without adjustment to the solar year. Because 12 lunations are 11 days shorter than a solar year, lunar months float through the seasons. Lunisolar, lunar months anchored to the solar year. The sun and the moon functioning together make a lunisolar calendar. Lunations are adjusted to the longer solar year by adding a 13th month seven times in 19 years. The weekly cycle restarts with every new moon. Each lunation has four complete weeks. The calendar established at creation is lunisolar. It is the most accurate and precise of all timekeeping systems. In scripture, each lunation starts with the celebration of a special day of worship, New Moon Day. New Moon Day starts with the first dawn after the astronomical new moon, also known as the conjunction. Six work days follow, and then a seventh day Sabbath on the eighth of the month. Three more weeks follow, ending on the 29th. Through measurement and calculation in the days leading up to the 29th, the time of conjunction is revealed so one can determine if the month has 29 or 30 days. No month, 
ever has more than 30 days. The true loony solar calendar is very user-friendly. Days of the week always fall on the same dates of the month. Every time a seventh-day Sabbath in scripture is assigned a date, it always falls on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the month. Scripture states that the moon was created specifically to measure times for worship. He appointed, created, the moon for seasons, that is, worship times. Creation week ended with the Sabbath day's rest. Exodus 31 states that the Sabbath is to be kept throughout all generations. Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am your Maker that doth sanctify you. The seventh day Sabbath was designed by the Creator to be the sign of loyalty between himself and his people. The enemy, Lucifer, has changed the civil calendar and stolen the worship due to the Creator. Through tradition and assumption, Lucifer has united the world in using a solar calendar with continuously cycling weeks. When one worships, reveals whom he worships. All who use a solar calendar for calculating their days of worship are unknowingly giving their allegiance and worship to the great deceiver. Those desiring to show their allegiance to the Creator will worship Him on the day He has designated. To find the correct day of worship, the loony solar calendar established at creation must be used. Scripture reveals that the calendar used for worship throughout all eternity will be based upon the new moon. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me. Whom do you worship? To whom do you give your allegiance? The calendar you use to measure time for worship reveals the deity you worship.